everybody, Erica Sterwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. I'm gonna show you a technique um, that I haven't used very often. Well, actually the technique isn't that uncommon, embossed resist, but I also wanna show you how you can use your regular inks um, to add color to an embossed image. So you can see my bunny is brown. I didn't want him to be white or black. Um, you know, the colors of the embossing powder we had. So I did a little experimenting and I'm gonna show you what I came up with. This cute little bunny is from Easter Friends. I've got uh, several projects on my blog this week featuring this project, uh, this product if you're looking for ideas. Make sure you click the link here on YouTube, hop back over. I've got a PDF and as well as the other projects. Okay, well, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is emboss our bunny. So um, actually we're gonna tape down our paper before we do anything. This is just chipboard that is you know left over from one of my paper packs. This is a full sheet of our um, watercolor paper and I'm gonna tape it down to the chipboard with painter's tape. If you've ever watercolored anything, you know that the paper starts to curl big time. Um, and then it's just kind of hard to control the colors. So I always just start right away, right off the bat, taping everything down. Um, you can use washi tape too, but I, I really find that painter's tape does the best. I'm trying to get as close to the edge, you know, like not taking up as much of the edge as possible. That way I don't waste any of the paper with the tape. Now we're gonna actually cut this piece down. You can see we're gonna cut it about like that. Um, and up here, we're gonna add some color um, for the little grasses and the flower. But before we do any of that, we need to stamp our bunny. Now, as you know, when you emboss, we have really two ink choices. We have Versamark and we have Craft White. We used to carry all of our inks in Craft, which meant you could emboss with all, all of them, but we don't have that anymore. So I wanna add color to my embossed image. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna ink it with Versamark and then ink it with Soft Suede on top of the Versamark and then we're gonna emboss it with clear. All right, the first thing you wanna do is take your Versamark and ink up your bunny. Get it nice and juicy. Okay, I wanna make sure I've got lots of Versamark ink on there because that's what's going to allow the powder to stick. Now, I'm gonna take my Soft Suede and just once, I'm gonna set it on there like that. I'm not gonna re-dab, dab, dab all over the place. I'm just gonna do it one time. And then I'm gonna stamp my bunny right there, all right? Now, I'm gonna take my clear embossing powder. I've lost my spoon, I don't know where it went. And we'll shake all of that off. Okay, now, we're going to emboss it, hit it with a heat tool until you see, you know, you could tell how it's kind of muted, right? It's kind of dull. Well, as the heat tool, before I do that, I wanna make sure I've got all the little crystals off, which I do not. Um, you can just take a paintbrush and get all the little granules of embossing powder that are sticking in places we don't want them. Brush those off. Now, I'm gonna hit it with a heat tool, and as it changes over, you'll see it becomes, the color becomes more intense. There we go. Now, the reason that we're doing the, um, the embossing and not just stamping the bunny and soft suede is because I'm gonna take watercolor and add color all around the bunny. And the embossing powder will resist the water. It uh, will keep our bunny white without letting the color run into the bunny. All right, now I'm gonna just kind of make sure I want it, it's, it's hard to tell when you have colored ink, you know, where you've got all the places done correctly. So I'm just gonna kind of leave that heat on there just a little bit extra, make sure it's nice and set. All right, now typically when I am watercoloring, I, I will take my spritzer and just, you know, douse it, get it real wet. 
But because we are using one of our regular inks, I'm gonna be really careful with my water. That embossing powder, for the most part, keeps that color in. But if it's really saturated, the color will start to bleed. Um, you can see here I got crazy and the, the color bled just a bit. So I wanna be careful when I apply my color. Um, normally I would take my water painter also and squeeze to get all the water out, but I don't have a lot of control when I do it that way. So I'm just gonna dip it in a bowl of water and I'm gonna go around the edge of my bunny and get it nice and wet. We're really just priming our paper right now so that we can just drop down that color and it will, you know, spread out like watercolor. Now, if you ever get too much water, you feel like, oh gosh, that was too much, or you drop water onto the bunny, which I did also, <laughs> you can take um, a paper towel and dab it real quick. All right, so I'm gonna get this water all up here like that. And I just wanna be able to drop my ink into the water and let it, you know, run out. So I am using Pool Party for the sky. And I'm gonna take um, a block and just kind of use it as my palette. And I think I will use this one. And I am gonna drop a little bit of water on that to get it, you know, kind of wet. And then I'm just gonna kind of lay down the color and it'll just kind of spread out. Pool Party is light. So if you want it to be an intense color, you're gonna to wanna to probably do several layers of this. You know, do it once, let it dry, do it again, let it dry, do it again. Um, I know you can also take your re-inker, your ink refill, and put a little drop on there and it's a little more intense. I have found, with my experience, it's too intense. I end up dropping heavy, amounts of ink you know and you get that kind of that blob of ink that doesn't spread um so i don't i don't really like to do that now i'm going to i should have a paper towel here and it has disappeared so let me grab another one i am going to pick up a little bit more color and we'll see if we can add in some more got ink over here I'm gonna go about this far down. I'm squeezing just barely. Again, I don't want my water to get crazy out of control because then it's gonna run over my rabbit and I'm not quite sure, you know, the ink might bleed a little bit. Right here, it's not bleeding at all. And my color is right up next to the edge of my bunny. My bun bun, as we used to call them. We used to have pet rabbits and we called them bun buns when my girls were little. <laughs> okay, now um, let's do Granny Apple. And I actually have, I can use the inside here or you can use another block. I'm gonna clean my brush, squeeze a little bit of water in there. And then again, we're just gonna kind of drop color. I want it to bleed into the um, pool party. Be real careful right there. All right, now we're gonna end up cutting this up here at about five inches. So the other two inches left up there are going to be for our grass and our little flowers. So I'm gonna take, um, well, I haven't gotten it wet yet, so let me get it nice and wet. I'm gonna take the granny apple and I'm just gonna add in some color Sometimes I even go like this. I know some people don't like that, but I do. Sometimes it makes the color really intense, but you do what you think is best. All right, now we also have a little flower. Oops, see, I just dropped water. That's why you gotta be careful. Ooh, I kinda like the way it turned out. That's why you gotta be careful with squeezing because <laughs> it gets a little out of control. All right. We don't want that to bleed too much into our sky. Um, our flower has a 
little pink end, but I'm gonna color that after we cut it out, um, just so that we don't get a lot of mix. Now, you could leave this just like that, but I love to add salt to my watercolor. I pretty much do it every time. Um, and if you just add a little bit of coarse salt, it's gonna give your um, watercolor some texture. You can see here some texture like that, all right? Okay, so now we're gonna let it dry and then we'll come back and brush off all that salt. Um, for the sake of the video, I have done one ahead of time. So let me grab that. And here we go. Now I wanna point this out right here. This is what I was talking about. If you have too much ink on your brush, it'll set down like that and it's like, you know, in so much ink that it doesn't spread out. Um, I, I'm okay with it, I'm not gonna redo it, but just be careful if you don't have enough water and you have too much ink on your brush, that's gonna happen. Okay, so you're gonna just take all that salt, isn't that beautiful? And brush that off, let me put it in the trash. And then carefully, carefully <laughs> pull off that tape. Now you could get a separate piece for the grass and the um, flower, but I just wanted to make it easy. I don't wanna to have to tape down two pieces. So that's why I've got that up there. All right, now let's get our trimmer and we're gonna trim that down to uh, five by three and three fourths. All right, so I'm gonna cut off this hard edge right here where that tape was. And then I'm gonna come up here and go all the way to five, like that. All right, now we want three and three fourths. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit from each side. Like that. All right. Now before we move on, before we start adhering things together, I'm gonna to stamp the sentiment. And this font is really light. You know, it's a really light scripty font. And we are stamping it on a textured paper. So I'm gonna use my Stamparatus so that I can stamp it a couple of times to get make sure it stamps clear, you know, clearly. And um, so I can add ink a couple of times to make it darker. So I'm gonna add the Happy Easter right there. And the other thing about using your Stamparatus is that you can make sure it's exactly where you want it. Pick that up like that. I'm gonna use Stays On Black. Stays On Black is a little more intense than Memento, a little more deeper in color. So after all that work, you don't have to worry about stamping it crooked. My goodness, how many times have I done that? Stamparatus will help you to not do that. Perfect. All right, now let's cut out let's cut out our little grass pieces. I am using um, the, this little grass um, from the Horizon dies, and I only need that part, so I'm gonna kind of leave it off there. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do the flower as well. This is from the Layering Hugs dies, and I think I'll do it like that so that we can color that flirty flamingo. Run that through. Oops. Ooh, that looks so pretty. Look at that. All right, we need one more tuft of grass. We'll run it through back the other way. Now, I added more color to the grasses um, on mine just because I wanted them, them a little bit darker than they were. So you can do that, but I think just for the video, we'll just go ahead and leave them kind of light. All right, I think we're ready to put it all together. Let's add a little bit of color to our flower. Um, flirty Flamingo this time. And we'll just get a little bit of ink on our block. And a little bit of color. All right, now we can get a little bit off of there to add a little more intense color if you want, like that. 
All right, now, probably should have given that some time to dry, but we didn't. So we're just gonna go for it. All right, from here on out, it's super easy. I have a green, uh, this is granny apple green, matte four by five and a fourth. We're gonna put that there. And then I've got a pool party card base that we will put on with dimensionals. Like that. All right, let's take our little grass and I'm gonna trim this one. So we just want a little bit of grass and I don't have my Tombow, so we're gonna have to use Stampin' Seal which goes like that. And I think I'm gonna cut off that because it stayed a little bit white. And we'll do this one like that. And let's add a few of these gorgeous brass butterflies. Because this is a very springy picture like that. And then last but not least, we will adhere our flower and I am actually going to wait so that I can wait till it dries but there you go and I would put it on with Tombow liquid glue now every every card you do is going to look different let's put it a little bit that way so we don't cover his face you can see just a variation in the intensity of the colors um, the the watermarks um, I love when it does that um, but fun and beautiful nonetheless all right, I hope you'll give this technique a try. Adding color to your embossed images is very easy. Just put the Versamark on first and the color on top of the Versamark and then emboss it with clear embossing powder. All right, you guys, click the link. Go back to my blog and you'll find two other projects. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.